Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.4.6 was just released. I'm going to go over all the changes and fixes in this update. I'm also going to go over a detailed article written by McCullough that goes over all of the difficulties and challenges the OpenCore Legacy Patcher developers are having trying to get macOS Ventura Beta working on unsupported Macs. Also, macOS Big Sur 11.6.7 was released. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. The OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.4.6 update has been out for a couple days now. But before I create an update video like this, I always install it on my own unsupported Macs first just to make sure the installation goes okay. All of the releases are tested by the developers first before release and have been really reliable. Let's go over some of the demonstration units that we're going to use today. Our first one is a early 15 inch 2013 MacBook Pro running macOS Big Sur 11.6.7 and our monitoring device today is a 13 inch 2010 MacBook. Let's go over it really quickly here how to update OpenCore Legacy Patcher. If you installed OpenCore Legacy Patcher in the last couple releases for the Google version, there's now a new automatic update system prompt that you get when you first open the application. So let's open it up now and we'll see that update prompt. And what it'll tell you is your current version that you're on and the latest version. So as it says here that we're running 0.4.5 and the latest version is 0.4.6. And we can click on view on GitHub to be able to look at the latest release. Once we're on the page, we can look at the notes if we wanted to, and then scroll down to the change log and the assets. So you want to be able to get the GUI application here and just click on it once and it'll automatically start downloading to your downloads folder. There's one small caveat here. If you're running OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.4.4, the automatic updater was not really working properly in that update and it was fixed in 0.4.5. So if you open up 0.4.4 and it doesn't pop up, don't worry about that. Just update to the latest release and you'll now get the automatic update prompts when you fire up the application. The update is just about done downloading here. We'll give it another second here and there it is. So we'll close our previous version here and we'll open up our Macintosh hard drive or click on finder, go into applications here, and we're going to open up our downloads folder and drag in the new version, open core legacy patcher, and you'll click on replace to install the new version. Now we'll double click on it to open it up. We'll verify and we'll click on open and we're on the new version of the application here. Switch now. over to our Monterey 2010 MacBook here. And once we have the latest version of the application installed, we can go and build OpenCore and install it to our internal drive and install the latest version of the post install root patches to save time, especially if we're going to do a macOS update in the future. So what do I mean by that? If we install a new version of macOS Monterey, all the root patches will need to be installed after. And the, it's going to use the automatic root patching system. But by updating the app before you do that, you can save some time so you don't get a message like this that basically says, hey, we've detected that you've installed an update and you're not running with the root patches and you need to install them, but there's a new version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher out there, so you got to click OK, go to the GitHub and download the application. So what also happens is that when you run the post-install root patch with the latest version, it will also update the automatic root patching system located in library application support. So when we look on the modification date, we see that it was yesterday at 11, 12 p.m. If we we click install root patch right here. You can see the latest date that you did that last and you can click start root patching. Click yes. Give it a second here. Administrator password. The root patching is started. And there it goes. You see it's being updated right now. Give it a second. And that's it. So let's open up this window here and we can see that the latest version was done today at 12, 12 a.m. So we're ready for an update and we've got all the latest root patches on the system and we can install an update and the automatic root patcher will come up after with the latest version and prompt you to be able to install them. So we're all good. All we need to do is click on reboot. Now let's go over some of the changes and fixes in the 0.4.6 update. First of all, that resolves a Bluetooth 2.1 support issue in macOS 12.4 that was also backported to the 0.4.5 release. So if you missed that, you're going to get that here. Also, the speed loading times of the GUI application have been greatly improved. So let's take a closer look at that on our 2010 13-inch MacBook here. I've got both versions of OpenCore Legacy Patch here, 0.4.5 and 0.4.6. So let's open up 4.5 and see how long that takes to load on this older MacBook. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000. So nine seconds before that 
actually open the application. And again, it's going to open a lot quicker on the newer Macs, but on the older Macs, it was a little bit slow. So let's take a look at what that takes on the newer version of 0.4.6. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. Pretty quick. So it cuts the time in half in a little bit more. So really nice, fast loading speeds on the new 0.4.6 app. Another interesting part is, is that this is the final release, 0.4.6, where the TUI or the terminal user interface binaries are uploaded on release. We have no plans to kill the TUI outright, but no effort will be made to maintain it. Developers can still compile the TUI from source. Regular end users should transition to the GUI application. If you used OpenCore Legacy Patch over the last two years, you're very familiar with the TUI application. It's basically a terminal-based interface that shows you all the same settings as the GUI, but all in a terminal window. So this is the last version that you're gonna be able to download this without it, having it built yourself going with the source code. So it's sad to see the TUI go, but the GUI has been improved so much. It's really great for the developers to be able to concentrate on the graphical user interface app instead, because a lot of users really enjoy the new app and all its new features. Now let's go over some of the finer details on some of the improvements to the GUI application. First of all, there is a new return to disk option when selecting the partition. So let's take a quick look at that. So we can go back to our 2010 13-inch MacBook. If we click on build and install open core here, and then we click on install to disk, we'll get to the next menu here and we now have a return to the main menu. So let's say you were doing this, you're like, oh shoot, I need to do something else or I need to make a change. We can now return right to the main menu. That's a really nice option without having to close the app. Right so right. there's also a add search for disks again during the open core install. So let's go back and look at that option. So when we go back into that same part here, we can see right away that if you formatted a disk and it's not showing up here, you can just click search for disks again, and it might be able to pick up the disk after you formatted it correctly. So that's another neat feature. Also, there's a prevent idle sleep when running a long process downloading or flashing. For example, what would happen was is that if you had a slower internet connection and you were using the install, create Mac OS installer here, and the download was taking forever, the system could go to sleep. Now there's a prevent sleep, so that download will finish properly. You might have noticed right away that the start open core build automatically now starts when entering the build menu. So before that was an extra step. So if you go back to the main menu and click on build and install open core, we didn't even need to click build open core. It's saving us an extra click. If we go into the non-metal settings, we'll notice right away that the enable beta blur is now enabled by default. And this is great because if you click on the menu bar and you see a bunch of squares or boxes or flashing, that's what beta blur fixes. And you can see that's not happening on this model. Anything with non-metal could have this issue. It was not enabled by default because they were still testing it, the non-metal developers, but now it's ready for production. If you notice that there's a little bit of a performance hit here, disabling might slightly improve the performance, but you might think to yourself, well, I don't really like seeing all those flashes things on the menu bar items here. I would rather have it nice and fluid like this and they leave it on. I haven't noticed really any performance hit and I really like to leave enable beta blur on. Now keep in mind any changes that you make in the non-metal settings here you have to log out and log back in for those changes to take effect. Now let's talk about this really detailed Mac OS Ventura and Open Core Legacy Patcher article that McCullough put together and this is what I love about open source. All the information is here. All the development work that the developers in McCullough are working on right now is out here for you to be able to read and see all of the issues that are going on right now with Mac OS Ventura and Open Core Legacy Patcher. And I'll read out loud this first paragraph here. This page will be updated as we learn more about Ventura and the changes within. If you're not an active developer for Legacy Macs, do not install Ventura. Even if you're bored, some random users installing the beta create more noise, thus more difficult to properly develop the patch set. Know that this is an early developer beta, the very first one and that hardware bricks can happen and might be unrecoverable. Only continue on if you're all right with flushing the hardware down the drain. Now that, that's a strong statement, but it's also a fair warning that this is so early in development and the developers take a lot of time 
time to test the patcher against the operating system and all the versions of hardware to make sure there is no issues before they release the patcher so you won't have those issues on your Mac when you try it out. Wait, let the developers work on getting the patcher stable and working before you test out Ventura on your unsupported Mac. McCullough goes over all of the issues that the developers are currently working on now. And I'll include a link in the description if you want to go over all of these items here because it's fascinating that McCullough has documented all of the issues and what this current situation is with all those issues. And down here at the end, there's an overall estimate time for support. Looking at all these issues in front of us, I don't believe there's any short-term possible fixes for the community to use. The best time frame would be six months from now when a proper build of Open Core Legacy Patcher can be released. But even this is difficult to promise, and that really gives you an overall picture of the difficulties that the developers are having right now with all the changes in Mac OS Ventura. But keep in mind, Apple has a six month beta release cycle anyway. So you really wouldn't want to be using Ventura beta on your system anyway, because even Apple is going to be making changes to the installer all the way through the release until maybe October, November of 2022, when the final version of Ventura is released to the public. So keep that in mind when we're talking about the length of time that it's going to take to get the patcher working. If the patcher is working by the time the final version is there. That's absolutely amazing, but it could take longer. So it's going to be interesting to see and follow along with the updates in this article on how the development will go throughout the release. Apple also released 11.6.7 update, but this particular update's a little bit weird because normally the Big Sur updates are just security focused. This one is just a bug fix with mail applications who are having issues with attaching attachments to email. So if you have that issue, you can install this update and you'll get fixed there, but there's no security fixes in this release. I ran it on my MacBook Pro here from 2013 and everything ran okay with the patcher, no issues. And I also get a lot of questions on what version of macOS should I install? My unsupported Mac should I install Big Sur or macOS Monitor? If you use a lot of applications that are metal heavy, maybe run with Big Sur because remember, if it's a metal Mac, you do not have to patch the root volume. You don't have to worry about installing those patches. So let's take a look at that. For this 2013 MacBook Pro, when you click post install root patch, no patches are needed. So all you're doing is installing the bootloader and that's it. You don't have to worry about any of the patches. But if I updated to Monterey, I would because Apple removed those drivers. So there's a lot better compatibility with some of these models with Mac OS Big Sur. So that's just something to keep an eye on if you're trying to decide on which version you want to install. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I can give you a hand. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And if you want to see all the latest Mac news, you can follow me on my Twitter. And I also want to thank all my viewers and especially my Patreon members. Thank you very much. I truly appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.